Hello, I'm John Verveke. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Toronto. I'm here with my co-authors of our book, Zombies in Western Culture, A 21st Century Crisis, and we're going to talk to you today about the connection between the zombies and the meaning crisis. I'm Christopher Mastro Pietro, and I'm here with Dr. John Verveke to talk about our book. Now, we're not just interested in zombies because they're interesting, though they are. We're interested in zombies because they're a symbol for what we're calling the meaning crisis which, among other things, is a crisis of worldview in Western culture. Think of a zombie as being like a kiss. A kiss doesn't just represent love. It is actually an action of love. It demonstrates love. Zombies do very much the same thing for the meaning crisis. They don't just stand for the meaning crisis, but they actually enact it. Hi, my name is Philip Mishchevich, and I'm here with my co-authors, John and Chris. Now, why should we care about this meaning crisis? Well, like the zombie, we seem to experience a deep disconnection from our personal, social, and cultural lives. And this has dramatic consequences. We seem to be facing a crisis in suicide, in uh, loneliness, um, voter disaffiliation, and people are disaffiliating from major world religions. Philip mentioned a decline in religious participation, and that's very important. Uh, the zombie is uh, often conjoined with an apocalypse, and we are facing an impending apocalypse on this planet. Ecological crisis, economic crisis, energy crisis. Yet we seem unable to deal with it because of a kind of mental fog. We argue that the mental fog is exactly being caused by this meaning crisis. Think of what we need in order to address these issues. We need a fundamental change in our cognition and our culture and our consciousness. And the only thing that's done that for us in the past was religion. But for many of us, that religious framework is no longer available. In the secular alternatives we tried in the 20th century, the pseudo-religious ideologies of things like Nazism and Marxism, have drenched the world in blood. So we are caught between these two options that are no longer available to us. It's important we understand that when it comes to the zombie, the devil is in the details. One of the reasons that the zombie is as powerful as it is, is that it's a perversion of the Christian mythos and meta-narrative. So what do I mean by that? Well, the Eucharist is at the center of Christian liturgy, and that's, of course, the sacrament of the consumption of the divine body and blood. So think of the consumption of the zombie. It eats brains, it devours the minds of others, it consumes, and it obliterates. Quite an inversion from the divinity and the transcendence that someone imbibes from eating the body and blood of Christ. Likewise, it's a perversion of the Christian apocalypse. The Christian apocalypse is is the great turning. It's a revelation by definition, but the zombie apocalypse isn't. The zombie apocalypse is by definition the closure of the world, the obfuscation of the world. It prevents us from transcending. It doesn't help us. Now, we're not arguing that a solution to the meaning crisis rests in returning to Christianity and Christian mythos. Rather, the zombie steps even further away from Christian mythos by being a perversion of even the secular apocalypse. In the secular apocalypse, there is a dignity and, and uh, finality to the struggle of its survivors. But in a zombie apocalypse, there's no hope. And this is expressed most uh, dramatically by the fact that the zombie is never named a zombie in any of these movies. The survivors call them the walkers, the walking dead, but never the zombies. And the reason is that knowing that it's a zombie, or calling it a zombie, doesn't actually help you um, kill the zombie. It doesn't actually give you any additional power over the zombie. And this is why the zombie, among other reasons, stands out from other monsters, like vampires and werewolves. So if we've reached peak popularity now for the zombie, and that's been true since about the year 2000, the zombie has never been more popular than it is now. It's everywhere, and we know that. But that's not for long, because one of the features of the zombie is that it's inherently a frustrating symbol. It doesn't teach us anything. It doesn't help us grow. It doesn't help us transcend. It doesn't help us become better people individually or collectively. By definition, it's existentially frustrating. It's a dead-end symbol, and that means that its popularity will inevitably decline. We'll become as frustrated with it as the survivors depicted on its movies. But our increasing frustration with the zombie symbol is still independent of the hermeneutic relevance of the zombie. 
In other words, we still don't want to be homeless. We still don't want to have the features that the zombie embodies. Now, I'd like to take a moment to discuss why we wanted to publish in open access. Chris, John, and I feel that academia is an economy of ideas. And the best way for that economy to work is when everybody can participate in it. When people aren't hindered by hidden paywalls or copyright issues to access other people's ideas. So that's why Zombies in Western Culture, a 21st Century Crisis, is free to read online.